why underexposing your photographs does not lead to better pictures. My name is Rich Dyson and this is Coffee Break Photography from Edinburgh Photography Workshop. This week's video is going to be slightly different. I run a beginner's photography workshop here in Edinburgh and the sessions teach the basics of exposure, composition and editing. And at the very end of the workshop I always leave an offer for the participants. If they want additional advice after practicing they can drop me an email and I'll endeavour to help them. And that's what happened a couple of weeks ago. I received an email from a client, and let's call her Francis, well, because that's her name. Uh, Francis asked me to review some images to see how she was progressing. She also told me she'd been given a tip to take photos underexposed, so there was plenty of data to work with in the edit. When I'm carrying out an image review, I ask for an edited JPEG file so I can see what the end intention of the photographer is, and I also ask for the original RAW file to understand how the picture was taken originally. Now, I want to put one thing to bed right at the start of this video. Any comments I make are my opinion of the photographs. I try to justify my opinion rather than saying something is good or bad. If you disagree with my opinion, that's absolutely fine. But don't just tell me I'm wrong, tell me why you think I'm wrong. So to start the review, let's look at the JPEG images. Overall, the three images show a good understanding of the technical elements of taking photos. All three images are sharp, there's a clearly defined subject where the focus is drawn and they're all instant shots. So at a high level, these are pictures taken by a competent photographer. However, a few things can help improve these photos. So let's look at each individually. The first thing I want to talk about is exposure. In Francis' email, she mentioned that someone had told her it was better to underexpose images. I'm not sure who gave her this advice, but in my mind, it is bad advice. Rather than just taking my word for it, I'll prove this through a couple of my images. This first photo of one of the lilies in my garden was taken slightly underexposed. By doing this, it looks pretty close to how I expected to see the final image look. There are a couple of things in the panel to look at. The first is the histogram. You can see that all the histogram data is between the two edges. Go back and watch my video, What is Good Exposure in Photography, to see why this is important and something you should generally strive for in your photos. And the second thing that I'd like to look at is the size of the file, 16.83 megabytes. This next photo is shot using a technique I recommend, exposing to the right. And this means that the histogram should be as close to the right hand edge as possible without clipping any highlights. To achieve this, I increase the ISO by 1.3 stops and slow the shutter speed down by 0.6 stops from 1 a hundredth to 1 five hundredth. I didn't want to go any slower, there was quite a bit of wind while I was shooting and I didn't want to have any blur in the image. And this has added two stops of light to the shot overall. You'll probably think this process has overexposed the image, particularly the background. I'm guessing you also think the first shot is better. Well, check the histogram. There's no clipping on either side, but the data has shifted far more to the right. This technique also increases the file size to 17.89 megabytes, an increase of just over 6% the data we've collected. This proves that the advice given needs to be corrected. Evidentially, underexposing an image gives less, not more data. And the reason for this is the way data is stored in a digital image. Let's split the histogram up into 10 percentiles. The top percentile at the highlights end of the histogram contains 50% of the data. The next percentile is 50% of the remainder, and so on. And as a result, we will always have more data in an image the more we push it to the highlights end of the histogram. The key thing is that we shouldn't clip highlights. We should only push them as close to the edge of the histogram as possible. When I edit the lighter image, I can create the result I had in mind with just a few slider tweaks. If I then compare the two images zoomed into the stain of the flower, I think you'd probably agree that the image on the left the one that was initially brighter and now edited, is much sharper, as a result of having more data at the lighter end of the histogram. With that long description of exposing to the right, 
Let's look at how what I believe was bad advice has led to issues in the three photos Francis sent over. This time I'm going to look at the unedited RAW file. The first image to look at is the sunset image. I like the composition of this shot with the figure on the hill sitting on the bottom left third of the shot. They're looking across the scene towards an interesting sky and I like the use of negative space to provide impact. However, despite being shot at a relatively low ISO 250, the sky looks quite noisy. Francis could have possibly reduced the ISO by shooting with a slower shutter speed rather than shooting at 1 400th of a second. It could have been slowed down to 1 1 60th and lowering the ISO to 100. However, the majority of this noise, I believe, is caused by underexposing and having less data in the image. The other concern I have is the extent of underexposing. The histogram shows a significant amount of clipping in the shadows. If you click on the triangles at the top of the histogram in the develop module, it shows clipped shadows in blue and clipped highlights in red. This means that we can't pull back information from these areas. And as you'll see when I apply a basic edit to the shot, we cannot use the data effectively. The edits I used increase the overall exposure, but then pull back the highlight slider to help improve the sky. I opened up the shadows as I think it's nice to see a hint of color in the grass. However, this is where the issue of the clip shadows comes in. The lack of data means we get a very noisy foreground. I then selected the sky and warmed up the color balance to help the sky more dramatic. If this had been shot using the expose to the right technique, I think it could have been an excellent image that could have easily been manipulated to give a dramatic result. The issues in this shot are more related to underexposed advice than anything about composition or technique. The next image of the crows shows similar issues. Again, the body of the front crow has clipped shadows. So when I pressed auto in the develop module, I saw that the focus on the front bird was excellent. The choice of an F10 aperture is a good one, as Francis is using a longer zoom, which reduces the depth of field in the image. So using a smaller aperture has maintained the depth of field to cover the body of the front bird. I would have liked to see a different composition of the subject moved to the left rather than the current central position. Doing this allows the subject to look across the scene and I'd also remove the flying bird in the background using the remove tool. Again, there's quite a bit of noise in the darker areas, which I firmly believe is down to underexposing rather than the ISO. The final shot is well handled in terms of focus and exposure. And this time the shot has less chromatic noise as the histogram has been pushed a little more to the right. My only criticism in this picture is that it would have been nice if Francis had moved a few centimetres to the left to lift the spider away from the petals behind it. It would also be good to tidy up some of the petals on the frame's edges. Francis might also consider cropping it to a square to tighten up the framing of the image. Overall, these are good images for someone relatively new in their photographic journey. But some bad advice about underexposing has let them down. I hope that by applying some critique to some of Francis's images and explaining why I believe that issues have arisen, I've convinced you why I refuse to believe that underexposing pictures leads to better photographs. If you'd like to learn the basics of exposure and composition and live near the beautiful city of Edinburgh or just want to come and visit and learn simultaneously, my switch to manual workshops run from Wednesday to Sunday. You can find out more information and book here. I have some great topics lined up over the coming weeks. They include tips on taking better photos, gear reviews, and maybe even ways to save a bit of cash when buying new camera equipment. The best way to see my content as it's released is to subscribe using this button down here. While you're there, give this video a like to help bring a few more people to my channel. Remember, I like to keep my video length to the time it takes for a coffee break. Shorter videos are my espresso offering, and slightly longer ones like this one are Americano sized. Very occasionally I might serve up a mocha chocolate, which will allow you to kick back for a slightly longer break. My name is Rich Dyson from Edinburgh Photography Workshop and this has been Coffee Break Photography. See you next time.